It's harvest time. The Arns Harvest. You can get it in regular colors as well, like black and brown, but yes, it can come in this hot yellow color. We've got a uh, small tip clip point blade, satin finish. We've got G10 handle scales, right and left pocket clip, flipper activated, so fairly ambidextrous, which is why I'm doing it with my left hand. Decent grip. I think there's some good things about this knife. I know harvest is over in most of Canada, but hey, it's never too late to get prepared, is it? So let's get to the tabletop and take a look at the Harns Harvest. Let's begin with our size comparison. There is the knife, and here is our Ontario Rat 1. Pretty similar in sizes. If you line up the pivot pins, of course you get a little more cutting edge, but very much the same length and size. It's a uh, Yep, similar in dimensions. So it's not a small folder. You've got a blade shape that it's fairly flat on top, but although there's a little bit of an upswiftness to it, you know, it comes down a little bit and then back up. And then you've got your clip point there and you've got uh, one spot there, but then right where my fingernail is, it changes angle and comes down even more. I found that to be kind of odd that it's not exactly straight. And there you go. A lot of nice belly in here, just a short section of it being straight. It's a flat grind, but not a full flat grind. It's swept back here, and there you've got the plunge and your forward choil. The forward choil is actually safe to use without having to spend a lot of time focusing exactly on where your finger goes. I never nicked my finger at all, and I often find forward choils to be just a little bit too small, but this one is quite good. The uh, jimping that we've got on the blade is nice. It's not too aggressive, but it certainly is aggressive enough. On the handle, they've got a little bit of a cutaway right there for the flesh of your thumb to just sort of sink in a little bit, so here or stretched out two good spots to rest your thumb. I like that. The badging or writing on the knife, Harns is known for having silly fonts and they put the, the writing and stuff on their knives with really silly fonts. This one's not bad. It says Harvest right there, not too large. And then right here it says Sandvik 14C28N. Again, not too large, but it is pretty dark. And then Harns up there and I quite like it. How well does the blade perform? Not bad. It's not super thin behind the grind, but it's far, far from being thick. It's actually a little bit thinner than uh, my sort of minimum requirement is, so I like that. It's fairly well sharpened, and it performed quite well for cutting. It's got a strong tip, so it's very durable for puncturing into even you know wood and then twisting up the blade, no problem at all. And the surface of the blade didn't get scratched up in my test, but I don't cut through a lot of steel and wire and stuff, so it shouldn't get scratched up anyways. But yeah, decent finish. I'd prefer a nice stone wash finish, but that's not bad. Oh, Bandit noticed something and he's going out to investigate outside. Well, in the living room. All right, that's pretty much it for the blade. The flipper which is part of the steel of the blade, is pretty nice. We've got basically a triangle sticking out, jipping on the front of it, so it works really well for light switch method, and even better when you're just pushing the uh, flipper tab down on a 45 degree angle. It just flies out just like you want it to. The uh, detent is pretty good. It holds the blade in when it's supposed to be in, and it gives enough tension so that when you open it, it comes open very well. If you take the blade tension or the lock arm tension off, it swings very freely, which is what you want. But when it's all the way open, solid lock up, no blade play, side to side, up and down, very good. Uh, lock up of the actual lock in there, it's kind of deep in there. I'm not going to be able to get a super good picture of uh, how the lock up 
engages there, but it's locked up just a tiny bit later than I prefer a brand new knife to be, but there's still lots of room for it to wear over. The lock arm release, it's chamfered and there's jimping on the top of it and there's enough access here to always easily get in there to disengage the lock. No problem at all in either hand to get in there, disengage the lock and get it closed. So very well done. It's a little bit larger this way than I prefer. I wish that front finger toil was a little bit smaller because I can't quite get my first two fingers in there. But you know, it's okay, I guess. This hump here is not uh, so annoying that I dislike it. If there was a larger hump here, you know, it might be frustrating, but not bad. So that's that part. How comfortable is the knife in hand? Well, we've got texture on top of this G10 so that there's grippiness simply from the texture. And then they've got these two lines that are milled through there, which add visual interest. Let me see if I can see, get it. Uh, yeah, you can see the shadows of it right now. So they're highlighted a little bit. They add a little interest and they add a little bit extra grip too. So that's not too bad. We've got a backspacer. It's got jimping all the way along it. You can see that it's a little bit dirty and stuff in there. That's another sign that, yes, I do carry these knives and I do test them. And, uh, you know, they get a little dirty. This is what it looks like after, you know, a fair amount of testing. There's a nice size teardrop shaped lanyard hole right there. I prefer lanyard holes like this. I really like this. So the paracord doesn't bunch up on the outside. And when you've got the knife in your hand, it doesn't bother you. It doesn't create extra pressure on your hand because the paracord's sticking out. Reverse grip is pretty good on this knife. Not great, but pretty good. Uh, reverse pull grip is very comfortable. That's really good. That's a power uh, grip if you need to really cut through something uh, that's not that's not moving, but it's hard to cut through. We've got button screws, but I like that they aren't really sunk deep into the G10. If you're going to do button screws in G10, I prefer them more like this where they're not sunk deep. They actually sit proud a little bit of the G10. So I like that. Pocket clip, there's room for you to put it on the left side if you want to. So that's good. Uh, pocket clip says Harns on it. It's not super in your face that it says Harns on there, but I'm one of those guys, you know, if you get your brand name once on your knife, that's good. I like that it's there, but I don't like it really more than once. So we've got it here on the pocket clip and there on the blade. And then you've got their H logo on the pivot pin as well. We've got a little bit of accent there with the blue anodized uh, metal. I'm assuming that's probably aluminum. I haven't checked it. The liners are inset. They're not skeletonized, but the balance point on this knife is right there. If they would have skeletonized it, then, you know, just a small bit of skeletonizing, they could have brought the balance point to the boat there. That would have been nice, but it's not bad. It's not a very heavy knife. We're going to go over all the weights and measures and everything later on. Blade alignment, when it's closed, it's not perfect, but it's pretty close. So that's kind of good. Let's take let's take a look at it working in a pocket. The uh, flat top, and then they've got sort of like a, just a bit of a, a bump for the pocket clip. Just slides in every time. I had no problems with it. Even though there's button screws there, those, because the handle, the pocket clip, I should say, the handles melt down a little bit, those button screws don't really get in the way to snag on the pants and get caught right there. It just sinks all the way in, so I quite like that. And, you know, with the yellow one, you know, somebody's walking by looking down at your pocket. Yeah, they'll be able to see that there, but, you know, you can get the brown or the black if you want to be more hidden, or you could dye this. Overall, it's a decent looking, feeling, functioning knife. How much does this thing cost? $41.99 US at White Mountain Knives. 
that's not bad at all. You save your 10% with coupon code CCE and now it's $37.97. So just under 38 American dollars, that's about 47 Canadian dollars. I think this is a good buy. Most of Hearn's knives are really good buy. They do unique stuff. They've got uh, super um, beasty kind of knives, big blocky, chunky kind of knives. Not blocky, but big chunky knives. And they've got some smaller knives as well. And this one's a really good little size. I quite like it. Let's go over all the sizes, dimensions, and all that information for this knife. The weight, 112 grams, 3.95 ounces. Under four ounces for a full-size knife, not bad at all. The factory sharpness, 120 best. It's just ever so slightly better than average. The cutting edge length is 84.7 millimeters, 3.333 inches. The blade length tipped to the G10, 88.3 millimeters, 3.48 inches. So that's why they're calling it a three and a half inch knife. The thickness of the blade, 2.94 millimeters. That's 0.116 of an inch, so just a bit under an eighth. The blade depth, the widest point is right up here, uh, close to the heel of the blade, 23.1 millimeters, 0.91 of an inch. How thin or thick is it behind the grind? 0.45 millimeters, 17 and a half thousandths of an inch. I like that. So you're going to sharpen this thing several times before you get up to 20 thou. So that's why I like knives to be under 20 thou. So this isn't bad. The grind angles. Uh, this side averages out to about 18 and a half. This side averages out to 15 and a half. It starts off at 16.1 goes to 14.2 close to the middle and 16.4 at the end and this side starts at 18, 18.1, 19.5. 14C28N has good hardness, good corrosion resistance, good durability, uh, good edge retention. I'd probably sharpen this to 18 degrees aside. The handle length is 123 millimeters, 4.84 inches. The grip area, it's about uh, 10 centimeters, 4 inches. If you add in that forward choil, then it's about 12 centimeters, about 4 and 3 quarter inches. The thickness of the handle, not counting the pocket clip, not at the uh, screws or anything, just along the G10, 13 and a half millimeters, 0 0.531 of an inch. The handle depth, the widest point within the grip area is right there. That is 23.1 millimeters, 0.91 of an inch just like the blade depth, the widest point. And when it's closed, the widest point's up at the flipper, 31 millimeters, 1.22 inches. And the total length of this knife, 211.2 millimeters, which is right around a little over eight and a quarter inches, under eight and a half. So the actual measurement was on the screen, so. Yeah, the measurements are not bad at all. I like Harns. I like Harns quite a lot. I like that they do out of the box thinking. They they give you knives. They you know do quirky things, and um, they still make decent quality. And their price point is better than average for what you get. At least that's my take on it. Uh, the forward choil is big enough to use. I like that. The jimping and thumb rest area are. A little better than adequate. The handle is comfortable and the blade shape, it's usable. It's a, a very decent blade. Another good thing that I haven't talked about yet is these screws. Let's pull up my drivers here. The screwdrivers go in deeper than a lot of screws. I find a lot of screws these days on knives yeah, the screwdriver will sink in, but not very far, and that leads to stripping screws more easily. These are decent quality screws in terms of hardness, and they're very good for um, depth to get the screws in there. Yeah, there's a little bit of, there we go, a little bit of play on the screw, a little more than I'd like, but because it's a deeper screw, I've never stripped out one of these Harns screwdrivers yet. A screwdriver's screws yet. The cons... I don't have a lot of cons. The main one is this detent is just a little bit softer than I prefer, but it's very usable. I flip the knife open 
every time. But I can hold the knife at the handle and do a hard wrist flick and have the blade come out sometimes. And I'd prefer if the detent was just a little bit harder. For those of you who have been living on the moon, I just did a video series. It's not quite finished, but the main videos are done on detents for liner locks and frame locks and how to fix them. So check that out if you want to know how to adjust a detent. It also works on detent uh, slip joint knives. So not the spring back type, but the type that uses you know, a lock arm with a detent ball. So I like this. You're curious to see how it's put together. Okay, let's see if I can take this apart. I might speed up the video. Maybe it uses both screws on the pocket clip. Just the one, just the one. Oh, there's nice oil in here. Uh, that dirt that you see right here, this grime, that's skin. When you're using the knife and you push the lock bar open, you rub a little skin off your thumb and that gets dirty. So often knives are dirty there and require cleaning. Let's wipe up this oil. Oh, what I did off camera, put my screwdriver in there and just use it as a lever to lift it off of those screws. So there's the stop pin nice and loose. These screws are well made. There's a little bit of Loctite in them, not much. We've got ceramic ball bearings. For those of you who are wondering, this is the oil that I use. If you're looking for oil for knives, check this out. Um, I had somebody tell me that he bought, you know, what is it, KPL or some other really high-end expensive knife oil. And uh, he found this to actually work better. <laughs> I really, really like this stuff. And let's wipe this off too. So a little bit of skeletonizing here would have been nice. If you've got a drill press, maybe you could drill out the liners a little bit. But uh, yeah, basically it's simply made, but it's well made. Uh, let me see if they've got ledges on these. No. So it's uh, not made to work without the backspacer. So you need to use the backspacer. Sometimes knives with these, they'll have a little ledge on the uh, post for the liner to sit on, and then they can work without the backspacer. But uh, I like this backspacer anyway. Looks like they initially thought they would do three pins to hold it together but uh, two is plenty, and that's thick, thick enough and strong enough to work just fine. And it is a D-shaped pivot pin. I don't know if you can see it right there, but it is. And if you take that out, you can see the hole. Well, it might be hard to see, but there's a D-shaped hole right there. The hole on the other, other liner is completely round, though. So it's time to put it back together and uh, we'll finish off this video. So I adjusted the spring tension for the detent just a little bit to make it a bit stronger, and it even flies out with more authority now than it did before, and yet without having to work too hard to do it. And the blade is held in when you go to shake the knife. It's one of the reasons why I'm so frustrated. Um, at least lately it hasn't happened so much, but the first three years of me having this channel, I had a lot of knives confiscated. And mostly they were because the blades could come out. And it's a simple fix. You know, you fix the detent and it's no longer a uh, counter to CBSA's interpretation of the law. So you never get a chance to touch those knives or fix them or anything. They're just gone. I like this harvest. And I like buying my knives from White Mountain Knives. Check them out if you haven't done so yet. Make sure you use discount code CCE to save your 10%. White Mountain Knives also has an automatic knife channel, channel, <laughs> website. Uh, White Mountain Knives Auto, I think it is. Your discount code works there as well. Unfortunately, automatics are illegal in Canada, so I can't be reviewing those. I did review one. 
but I did that while I was in uh, the United States visiting some people. So thanks for watching my video. Thanks to my Patreon supporters and my YouTube membership supporters. You guys are awesome. It really does make me happy that you're there and it helps this channel keep moving forward. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody says it, but those things really do make a difference and it only takes a second of your time. And remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.